Hey there! I had so much fun creating my last strange horticulture project that I had to come back for more. I can reorganize the plants on my fidget toy to my heart's content, but it's missing something critical. Hellebore, the midnight, the darkness, scourge of spiders, and smasher of plant pots, and the true owner of the shop. I had some leftover wood from the last strange horticulture project, so I dug it out and taped on some watercolor paper. If you don't know strange horticulture, you are in for a treat. It's the perfect mix of shopkeeping, occult mystery, and the joy of identifying plants and petting a cat. Pair that with beautiful art and cozy yet slightly ominous music you can hear right now, and you have a really stellar game. If that sounds like your cup of tea, stay tuned to the end, I have a surprise for you! Even if this is technically going to be a standalone piece, I wanted to make sure it matched the colors of the plant shelves. I had vague memories of the painting being a challenge, and couldn't remember which colors I had mixed up, so I rewatched that footage. And wouldn't you know it, I don't tell myself anything! no footage of which colors, or how much of each, so once again, we're winging it. After a few different mixes, I feel pretty good about the match. And the trees were less of an issue than last time, it only took me a few layers to make sure they faded nicely into the background. I am very proud to report that I have learned lessons and done a smart. Instead of using tape to make guides for the window frames, removing the tape and having a minor meltdown because it ripped the paper, I just lightly penciled the lines and freehanded it. Did I breathe at all? No. Did I ruin the paper? Also no, so that's a win! I can't overstate how much I love this game, and one of the best things about doing the last project was finding out how many of you loved it too! Talking with you about all the endings we found, which ones we're trying to get, how we organize and color code our plants, has been so much fun! I could gush about this game with you all forever! Please, take that as an invitation, really, gush with me in the comments! As I was putting the finishing touches on this project, Bad Viking, the developers of this game, announced a return to Undermere in an upcoming game called Strange Antiquities. Be still, my heart, if there's anything I love as much as a plant shop, it's a collection of strange and wondrous items. The trailer is up on Steam, so go take a look and don't forget to add it to your wish list. Let's just set that aside for a while and start working on Hellebore. My plan is to create a box that will represent the countertop in the shop and have the window attached to that, but since I am not good at measuring, I wanted to make Hellebore first to ensure I have enough room for him to sit happily. Now that he's a little loaf, let's get to the good part his paws. He needs two little sausages to squish under his belly. And of course, the toe beans! Making a cat and not making the toe beans is a sacrilege. Yes, they're inverse beans right now, but I have an idea of filling them with resin so they're shiny and will show up better in the end. Now for his cute little tail. I positioned his body near the edge and stuck his tail on so it can drape over the counter. I popped his body in the toaster oven and made myself a quick cup of tea while waiting for the ding. If you've seen my other projects, you might notice that I don't make animals very often. The closest things I've done are Pokemon. This is because I don't know how to make animals. Or people. 
I knew I'd need a few tries to get his face right, so baking the body was kind of like a save point before the part I know I'll mess up. The first time, he came out looking like a little fox instead of a sleepy kitty. I could have named him Fox Glove to keep with the plant theme, but he certainly wasn't Hellebore. I tried again, and I think I got much closer this time. And now it's time to channel my inner rolling stones and paint it black. Tobin time! I put a bit of UV resin on my smallest wire and carefully dipped it into the Tobin divots I made earlier. I knew one hellebore wasn't enough, but I wasn't sure what the second pose should be. Luckily, you all answered and there was a clear winner! Thank you for helping me decide! Now that we've settled on the blip, let's get started. I made a second head the same shape as Sleepy Hellebore and carved in some eyes. And now for the tiny tongue. Well, it's a little big, much more of a merm than a blep, so let's blend it in till it's the right cuteness. And of course, he needs something to groom. It took me a while to find the right balance of noodly and strong, and also the right length. I baked him so his arm wouldn't fall down, and added a little ball of clay for his paw. This silicone tool was perfect for getting in between his toes. I always love when cats or dogs spread their toes. It's so funny to me for some reason. And ball tools for the toe beans. We must have matching paws. Now, we need a place for Hellebore to nap and groom, so let's get started on the shop counter. Since I'm abysmal about actually measuring things, I made a box off-camera that's two Hellebores big, and cut some more pieces to make a slightly larger box. Using wood glue, I stuck the bigger box together, and that magically transformed the small box into a drawer. To get the right color, I mixed up some very watery acrylics and used them as a stain. Honestly, this works really well with basswood. I don't know how effective it would be on other woods, but that's fine since I can't cut anything but basswood here at home. Well, I guess I could cut balsa also. I let the stain dry and grabbed some wood finishing wax. I absolutely love the look of soft wax finishing. It's got the shine, but much more cozy and inviting than something like polyurethane. Sorry, polyurethane, you have a time and a place, just not here and not now. I cut a tiny piece of wood to act as a drawer stop and glued it to the top inside of the box. Now the drawer opens in a very professional way and doesn't just flop out. Now, the drawer is slightly more than two hellebores big, so I pulled out my favorite silk clay and made a little pillow for them to nestle in. In this first round, I just pressed them slightly into the silk clay and continued building it up around them over time so they'd be snug. 
What kind of shop counter would this be without a bell? I pulled out the screenshots and started sculpting. And sculpting. I added clay, took away clay, made it higher, squished it down. Was I overthinking this? Yes. Yes, I was. I set it down, came back an hour later, rolled out a ball, squished it, carved a line, added a top, and it was done. I based it in black and dry brushed it with gold and bronze to give it a well-worn look. In the design, there are lovely ornate patterns on it if you look very closely, but sadly I realized it too late. It just goes to show you how much care and attention the developers put into every aspect of this game. Yep, I made a lovely little frame, stained it, and glued it to the painting. Upside down. I wasn't going to risk taking it off and ripping the painting, so I decided to add a fourth edge to the frame and reposition the pins that hold it to the counter. Much better. Drawers are pretty hard to open without some kind of handle, so I made a little knob like the one on the drawer in the game and glued it in place. I pulled out my epoxy sculpt and mixed up the batch for the hanging plants. I typically do everything in polymer clay, but I knew I wanted these to be extra sturdy. My acrylics aren't super opaque, so I had to base it in white so the colors wouldn't be devoured by the void. And with that, our little shop counter is finished. I had shared the original project on Steam, and my heart burst with joy when the developers saw my art in the community hub and said they loved it. I really wanted to do their game justice, and their response was incredibly motivating, warming, validating. I don't know the right word to describe it. I immediately decided that I wanted to send them the Hellebore project, even before I knew when I would do it. As the Hellebores head to their new home across the pond, it's time for me to share the big surprise I promised. The two brilliant minds behind this game incredibly generously sent me three Steam codes for Strange Horticulture to share with you all. I'm selfishly extremely excited to have three new friends to talk with about the game. If you'd like to play this game, please leave a comment saying, I want to pet Hellebore. I'll be randomly picking three people on July 7th. If you've already played this game and want to expand the fandom, Please consider sharing this with your friends, and if they like the sound of the game, they can enter the drawing too. Again, thank you so much to the Bad Viking Brothers for sharing these codes. Your work is fantastic, and we can't wait to return to Undermere. In the meantime, check out their website. They have an archive of all their games you can play while waiting for Strange Antiquities. Thank you all for watching! If you haven't seen my first Strange Horticulture project, you can check it out here. And if you want to support the channel, please like the video and or subscribe! Have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time!